Welcome back. In this video, we will look at exceptions. So in the previous video, we looked at assertions. So what I want to do is to take the same bank account again, copy it, and I've created a new file called exceptions. And I want to use that same bank account at the top to demonstrate exceptions as well. So I will remove the assertion there now so that we have the basic bank account class. Now we'll get to the bank account class now. So let's just look at normal exceptions that can occur. Let's say I've got a variable called list and the list has got values in it. So let's say I've got one, two, three, four, five, and that is basically five values. And if I print out and I say list at position 10, now we know that positions are going from 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So position number 4 is the last one that I can actually use, but I'm trying to get the one at position number 10, which obviously doesn't exist. And if I run this now, you will see that we, give a, we get a nice exception here. The unhandled exception, range error. And it says invalid value not in inclusive range of 0 to 4. So it gives me a very descriptive error there. Uh, the index value is not in the range of 0 to 4, and I have given the value of 10. And it also gives me a stack trace there, and this is some of the Dart core libraries, so it's the part of the SDK, but this one is inside of my own class. So if I click on this one that says main, and it's got the link on the side, it takes me exactly to the line where I've got this exception. And you will see when an exception occurs in your application, it actually stops your whole application. It doesn't print out anything. It doesn't do anything else. Even if I go afterwards and I print out done there and run it again, you will see done is not printed out because it stops your application at this line where it gets the exception and nothing else can continue. So in order for us to handle these type of errors or these type of exceptions, we make use of a try and a catch block. So I'm going to say try there with a catch block. And catch accepts two arguments, which we'll look at now. Or not accept, it, it gives back two arguments that we can use or parameters we can use. And then uh, we'll see how we can do that just now. Right, so let me just finish these blocks quickly. So we also have a finally block. And these three is very important to look at. So let's just close down this. Uh, so in order for me to handle this error now, I can cut that and I'll place it in the try block. So whatever coding you are trying to achieve or trying to do, you will put into the try block. And in some cases, it could be a very long list of lines of coding that's inside of your try block. And then you can catch exceptions using this catch block. You should try and place only lines of coding that's actually able to throw an exception into the try block. So now basically what happens is if there's an error that occurs in the try block, it will go into the catch block and it will give me the message there and the stack trace there. So let's print out these two. Save it and let's run it quickly. So you can see there that it printed out E. There's E, a range error, invalid value, not in inclusive range of 0 to 4. And you remember that's exactly the same error we got in red previously. So the red one means it's not it's a, an exception that you did not catch. It actually just threw and it stopped your application. Whereas where we're printing out E now is printing out that blue line. And printing out F will be these lines that's printed out, which is those four lines. But very importantly, you can see that we actually printed out done. What does that mean? It means that my application did not stop when it got to this error. It just did nothing. But in the catch, we can now say what it should do. So we can also print out, uh, let's say, invalid, invalid value or something like that. But because we have this blue print out there, we can actually just maybe leave out that value. And we just print out the E there. And that will normally be sufficient for us because we can see range error, invalid value, not an exclusive. If it doesn't make sense, you can also print out the F there. So in most cases, programmers only use the E there and print out only that value to make sense of it. Right, so what is the finally block? So instead of printing it out there, I can actually do the finally there. And the finally happens whether the try block was successful or whether the try block actually threw an exception 
and we could catch it there. So it doesn't matter if the coding actually worked or if it didn't work because it will still print out done. So if we go and we say, let's say position 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, which is the 4, if we run it, it will print it out and it will print done. So you can see the print statement executed whether or not that was correct or not. So even if we make that a 10 again, run it again, you will still see the error and then done. So finally just means that it doesn't matter whether your statement executed successfully or if it went to the catch block, it doesn't matter. It will still do what you say in the finally block. Right, so this is how you can catch some exceptions inside of your main method and where you're busy um, using some of the normal things we daily do like the lists and the sets and the maps and whatever data types you are using. But let's say you want to incorporate that also into your own classes. So I'm going to comment out this constructor and I'm going to make use of a named constructor. So let's say we're going to say bank account dot new client. We're going to accept the balance as a double and we're going to initialize the balance. So we're going to say this dot balance equals balance that was passed in. Now let's open up this bank account named constructor. Now inside there we can maybe do a test there to check if the balance is less than zero then I want to force an exception to occur. So then I can say throw exception and I can give a message for that exception by saying something like the balance cannot be less than zero. Now let's let's look at this one quickly. So we are creating a new object using the new client named constructor, passing in the balance, setting the balance to the balance. But if the balance is less than zero, we're going to force this exception to occur. And that's basically what happened there also. If that index is not there, it is forcing an exception to occur and you need to catch it. So let's take away these lines and we use the bank account now. So we're going to say var account equals, we're going to say bank account, but we're going to use the new client one now. And let's set the balance as 100 and then we print out uh, account dot balance. Now let's run it. This one should be fine. There should be nothing wrong with it. We print out 100. But as soon as I make this now a negative value or anything less than zero there, I can run it again and it throws an exception. And you can see it says unhandled exception and the exception is the balance cannot be less than zero. It takes me directly to the class where, it, where the exception was forced and also where I used it in the main method and it shows me where the error is. So it could be that these values now also comes from a server somewhere. It comes into your um, constructor, your name constructor, and now we can test to make sure that it's not negative. So how can we then catch this type of exception? Well, again, the same thing. We'll have a try and a catch block. And just remember that your finally clause is optional. You don't need to have it, so I'm not going to add that again. But just remember that your finally clause there, or your finally block of code, executes whether your coding worked or whether it threw an exception. So what we want to try is this part. So I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to paste it. Now, if I catch the exception now, even if I do nothing in there, you will see if we run it now, it will not give you any output because that print statement never ran. Why? When it got into the try block and it went to this line, that minus 100 was passed in. We checked for the balance less than zero. It found it to be less than zero and it forced an exception to occur. Now we caught that exception. There it is. But we didn't print out or do anything. So we can go and print out that E and let's run it again and then we will see something exception the balance cannot be less than zero so that is how you force a specific exception to occur and also then how you can catch that exception now there's also a way for us to catch a specific exception so for example i could have said here on exception catch and you can see i've thrown an exception there so i can say on exception and exception is the super clause of all other exceptions so if you don't know what a specific exception is, you can use exception, but it is really not recommended for you to do that. 
So you'd rather use a specific exception that is there. So if you start typing exception there, you will see there's lots of types of exceptions that you can use um, as your throw there. So I can say throw any type of exception there with a message and then you can catch that exception. So let's look at creating our own exception for this bank account. So in some cases, programmers create their own classes, which is an exception class that extends exception to add their own exception classes that they can catch. Throw first and then catch somewhere. So in, instead of saying throw exception there, we will create our own bank account exception there. So let's create the class and we call this one zero balance exception. And we're going to say implements. I think I said extends uh, previously. So it's implements. It's an interface called exception. And uh, we're going to use that exception class as the base one. Right. So now in this class zero balance exception, we will accept a balance. So I'm going to say double balance and then we need a constructor. So I'm going to make this a constant constructor because we're not going to change it at all. So it's a zero balance exception and we're going to pass in this dot balance. So we're setting up the exception object which will hold a balance and now we can do something with that balance. And the only thing we need to do is to actually override the two string method. So we're going to have at override and we're going to have string to string and we can return something. So the one thing that we want to return here is the message. And what is the message that we want to send through when there's a zero balance? So we can say zero balance exception, the name of the exception. Maybe we can show the balance and only if you want to show the balance, you can actually accept it here. Otherwise you can leave out the balance part totally and just have an empty constructor there. So it's not needed if you're not going to show the value. So I'm passing in a value to this constructor so that I can show it. But if you don't need to, you don't need to pass it in. So let's say we're going to show the balance also. And then say your balance cannot be less than zero. And now I can save it. And that's all you need to have an exception clause. So you basically need a constructor that constructs the object and you need your two string method for the message. And now I, instead of saying exception there, I can throw a new zero balance exception and I can pass in the balance. Now what you could have also done is to pass in a string there and then return that string there. So you can type your own message there and it will print out the message. So now it throws a zero balance exception and I'm still catching a normal exception. So let's see what run what happens when I run it now. You can see it catches it, zero balance exception, the balance minus 100, your balance cannot be less than zero. So this normal basically base class or super class of all exceptions will catch it, no problem. But if I want to be more specific, I can catch the zero balance exception there. And then my code is a lot more readable and everybody knows what's going on and I'm catching that specific exception. So exceptions is a way for me to have my application still continue even though there's a specific error that's occurred by using try and the catch block. And remember you can also use your finally block to do something whether the try block executed 100% or the catch block executed the finally block will always execute. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.